As a kid, one of my best friends was my box of crayons. During those years, my mom suffered with severe depression and she slept a lot of the time. So I spent hours at the dining room table drawing pictures. I used to draw on those little pieces of cardboard that came with my dad's freshly laundered shirts from the dry cleaners. And I can still remember the distinct chemical laundry smell mixed with crayon wax. Well, in spite of the drawing skills I inevitably developed, I found it really hard to process my mom's mental illness and I grew into a pretty angry young teenager. I was the kind of kid that would shoot first and ask questions later. I think I was so cranky at the time, being around me was a little bit like snorting fresh wasabi. Well, as time went on, I learned to reel my anger in for the most part. But still, when faced with difficult situations, especially in relationships, I tended to act much the way I had when I was a kid. I don't think I'm alone in this. It's so much easier to react the same old way and so much harder to learn new ways of dealing with difficult situations. But what if we could shift our way of seeing and learn to see adversity in a new way? Well, drawing has taught me that we can. As kids, most of us learn to draw in a similar way. I remember being taught to draw simple shapes and icons to symbolize virtually everything around me. And I think as adults, many of us are still drawing the way we did when we were five years old. How many of you recognize this guy? Or the house he lives in? Well, drawing this guy can be quite comfortable because that's the way we've always drawn. But if we really want to learn to draw well, it's really about seeing our subject in a new way. And I think it's somewhat the same in relationships. If we really want to love well, we have to learn to see people in a new way. One summer as a young illustrator, I was lucky enough to work for the now defunct Vancouver Province newspaper. The new editor at the time invited me to draw a series of political portraits to run along with news articles. And I drew all the famous names of the day, from George Bush Sr. to Mother Teresa and even the Pope. I spent the entire summer in the newsroom listening to music and drawing pictures. And then one day, something dawned on me. I realized I had started to see the face I was drawing in a different way. I had reinterpreted the face as merely shapes and gray tones. Gone was any preconceived symbols of what the eyes should look like. Gone was any concern that the ears would be too low. And gone was the worry that it wouldn't be good enough. I realized what allowed me to draw well was that I had let go of the symbols I had learned in childhood. Could this ability to shift my way of seeing be used in other areas of my life? In relationships, perhaps? When I draw, I use a couple of tricks to help me get back into that non-judgmental way of seeing. And one of the things I do is I flip my subject upside down. And this simple trick is actually quite amazing. It tricks your brain just enough and it makes it way easier to see the shapes and gray tones. And I think this trick can work well in relationships as well. Well, maybe not literally. So let's say you're having a conversation with a friend or your partner and you start to feel defensive. Maybe you start to feel attacked or misunderstood or it seems as though they don't hear what you're saying. A lot of the time, I think the way we interpret other people rarely has anything to do with them. It's all about how we see the situation. I think most of us have a storybook we carry with us. When we're stressed, we open the book, flip through the pages, look for the most comfortable response and just kind of go with it. And of course, everybody has their own storybook character. You may be familiar with the powder, the passive aggressive, or my personal go-to favorite, the rager. The point is these stories are from the past and don't often serve us well in relationships today. We need to see things differently in order to redraw these grumpy characters. So now when somebody rubs me the wrong way and I start to feel that old familiar reaction coming on, I take a slow, deep breath and I try to visualize them as they were as a little child. Now this might seem like a really simplistic idea, but I can promise you it will immediately help you feel empathy. And empathy can tame even the angriest reaction. But I'm the first to admit, changing old habits can be very hard. Here's an example of this from my drawing career. 
As I'm sure you know, cameras are not allowed in the Supreme Court. So sketch artists are often sent to capture visuals for the media. So this was a last minute thing and I was filling in for the regular sketch artist. And it wasn't until I got into court that I realized I would be sketching a murderer. Well, throughout the day, the accused man kept slowly turning his head towards me and glaring at me. And this scared the hell out of me. And needless to say, the new way of seeing I had discovered just days before was kind of replaced with this. Well, looking back on this, I realized I could have avoided this drawing disaster. Maybe the guy was innocent, or maybe he killed in self-defense, or maybe he was framed, who knows? But at the end of the day, I realized it was how I was seeing the situation that shaped its final outcome. Well, I'm still very much a work in progress, and I do have my moments. But I have come to know that every one of us has something from our past that can trigger our behavior. And through my practice of drawing, I have learned it is entirely possible to change the way we see things. And if we remember this one simple fact, it's so much easier to feel empathy and love one another. And remember, deep down inside, we're all just big kids. And most of us are still drawing stick men.